they are coming. Local, need your aid. Hello, welcome back, Sal. Sanctum's going core, and I have a lot to go over. Why it could be A, a self-sustainable farm, B, really profitable, C, a lot of fun, and I'm just I'm just stoked, and I have a build in mind that I think can dominate it and do really well at it, basically because I have a build I know did really well on it back in Sanctum League. Now, to start things off with, sustainable Sanctum. This unique relic here. Look at the reward type. Herald of Scourge drops two additional very keyword additional forbidden tomes if you remember previously when we had rewards like this like here additional sanctified relics you would know lycia very often dropped a sanctified relic and this was just two additional on top of it that implies to me there is a good chance lycia herself might just drop forbidden tomes while you're going through the sanctum and maybe you could even drop a forbidden tome throughout the run because you could drop a sanctified relic from the first boss it wasn't very common but you could that being said, my thinking is if you have a good character that can run these challenge runs, every time you get a run like this, you can run it and start self-sustaining your Forbidden Tomes. Now, speaking of Forbidden Tomes, you only need the Forbidden Tome and that basically will get you through an entire Sanctum because if you go to this footage here, what Chris is saying, listen carefully. Upon successfully completing that Sanctum floor, the next floor is generated as a tradable item. With all Upon completing floors, the next floor is generated as a tradable item. So, you start out with a tome, you complete the first floor, and the next floor is generated as a tradable item. That implies, basically, you start with a tome, you do the next floor, next floor, next floor, and you complete the whole sanctum. Like, one tome is an entire sanctum because it keeps chaining to the next floor. Which means, potentially, if Lycia drops uh, Forbidden Tomes, and you can do Challenge Relics for Forbidden Tomes, you can just maybe even chain these infinitely without having to keep going to maps or keep going to delve or whatever it is it seems like it's its own self-sustainable thing maybe it drops rarely in maps but if you want to just do sanctum you might just be able to do it now you're thinking man that sounds crazy you don't have to do maps in between like if you remember when you were doing maps or you were doing sanctum it, in, in this i did this basically all sanctum league you map rush just to get to the sanctum floor save the room and you just did that until you had an entire floor and then you'd go run the floor in my opinion, that took maybe 60% of the time, maybe 70% of the time. Like, the amount of time it took me to run the Sanctum was a much smaller portion of the time. And right now, what they're suggesting is, basically, if this self-sustains, which I think is decently possible if you can complete the challenge relics, I would I would think that would be a part of it. You could maybe just be running Sanctum non-stop. And if you remember Sanctum, the rewards were pretty good. Now, this showcases a Mirror of Calandra. So they still have Mirror of Calandra in the drop table. Super rare. We're probably not going to find it throughout the run. But looking at this, they clearly still have Exalt Orbs in the pool. They, they're still going to have Divines. The question is, did they change the drop rates? Now, my guess is they probably rebalanced the drop rates, especially considering there's this potential of just running nothing but Sanctum. But Sanctum was valuable before when you were spending almost... 30% of your time doing Sanctum, and the other percentage was just map rushing. Now, granted, this did give you invites to Eater and Exarch, so there was some profit to it, but it was a small portion of the profit pool. Most of the profit I was getting from Sanctum was from running Sanctum, and now if the entire time I'm doing Sanctum, um, my thought process is this could be a real money printer for currency. That's just the way I'm thinking about it. And just going over the Lycia drop table, the uniques are insane. They, I am assuming they're going to add back in Balance of Terror, Eternal Damnation, Original Sin, Sandstorm, Winds of Fate. These, I'm assuming, are going to be back in the game. Original Sin probably still going to be tied to Original Scripture. We'll see. That being said, these are now tradable. So if you drop an Original Scripture and you can't do it, you can now sell it, I believe. I, I could be mistaken, but I believe you can sell it. So the thought process is, if we're doing these Sanctum early, you're looking at this drop table. It is stacked. Sandstorm Visage is insane. Eternal Damnation, probably one of the strongest amulets ever created. My guess is if they're going to rebalance things, I could see Eternal Damnation getting like the Ashes or the Omni treatment where it becomes a 1 in 50. It becomes much rarer, but also along with becoming much rarer, it becomes much more valuable because it's worth it. This thing is insane for defenses. Balance of Terror, also an insane jewel. Like all of these items are good. Winds of Fate is the most meme of the all I of all the items here, and it still has a use case where it can be pretty good in like a battle mage setup. Like some weird wacky builds can make use of this. 
So we'll see if they dilute the pool, like they add some other uniques that delight, dilute the pool. But if they don't dilute the pool, you're going to get a lot of money early league from just selling these items if you're one of the first people farming these gear slots because they're really good on a lot of builds. Okay, so that goes over the drop table of uniques. Looking at the unique relics, they said also Lycia will always drop a unique relic. If you look at these, you have the one that guarantees a balance of terror. That's money if it stays. Original scripture, that's money if it stays. Like, it'd be a rare drop. Like, I spent the entire Sanctum League. I didn't drop it once. No, I'm not salty. Not even a little bit. Okay, maybe a little bit. But... If you look at the other relics possible, Broken Sensor, Gilded Chalice, Divinity, and Night Lamp are all things that were pertaining to Sanctified Relics, Invocations, and Sanctified Relics. My guess is these had to be rebalanced to new reward types, and they showcase one of them right here, which is Forbidden Tomes. So you could use this to sustain your Forbidden Tomes, and not only that, you could get other benefits, which we don't know what they are, but maybe there's some cool stuff that's extra loot. Maybe one maybe doubles the currency you drop at the end. Who freaking knows? And then there's this one, which also has... I forget what the variations were, but I'm sure that this might have to be rebalanced too, because I think it might have had to do with Sanctified Relics for some of them. I'm not sure. The point is, you have potential for doing a lot of challenge runs. Now, specifically, challenge runs are pretty much usually worth doing. In terms of like this one right here, the Unknown Rooms, it'll gimp some of the currency you get from running it, but I'm guessing the value of a Forbidden Trove in terms of the trade market and sustaining your own Forbidden Tomes will make it worth it. That being said, you need a build that can crush... Forbidden Sanctum, because Forbidden Sanctum is a pretty hard initial content. Like, once you get good relics, most builds can do a lot of stuff, but even in the challenge runs, certain builds start to fall up, fall off in terms of power, and there's one build that comes to my mind. I mean, I played some pretty decent build builds, there were builds, but there was one build that just crushed Sanctum like no other for me. Now, granted, of the builds I've seen, the one other build comes to mind that could also crush Sanctum, and that's Shockwave Totem. That's not the build I played, but that's a build I saw that actually seemed like it could really do what needs to be done. In terms of a build I played that dominated Sanctum, and I just love playing, is this Trick Trickster Hexblast Mind character I made. So if you're wondering about this setup, the, the only major things that change is, is we got basically the AoE Mastery on Mines, and some of the nodes changed position a little bit. Like, it's not hard to adapt. Very... I'm going to say almost nothing in terms of power was lost. We just got power gain because the masteries for mines got a little bit better. Um, so just an example of what it looked like to play this character is you would just essentially insta phase all the boss fights without too much trouble, without having to dodge many attacks. So boss fights were one of the places you could lose, resolve and die. And, and for the most part, you could, we could do those insta phases. For example, right here, this one isn't instant instant but it's pretty and on top of that this character has a bunch of evasion ghost shrouds it has uh suppress uh with uh trickster suppress which suppress with trickster is pretty giga chad and it has those layers and those will now pair with the new sanctum mechanics where evade means something in terms of a resolve mitigation and so does es so it has two of the primary defensive layers that you can use in sanctum but for the most part the reason hex blast dominated in sanctum is it froze everything and it had auto targeting. I didn't have to look. I didn't have to think I could turn off my brain. I would chuck mines and I would just go and I'd be freezing all the guys I found in there and just insta wiping everything. It was the simplest form of turning every difficult sanctum into just completely turn my brain off easy. It wasn't a hitless run specialist. I made a specific character for hitless run specialist, which is this character right here. Budget hitless sanctum assassin specialist. This is an icicle mind character. This is a ZHP character. I don't recommend it for the base game or regular gameplay. I recommended it specifically for doing hitless runs. If those still exist, I think this is by far away, far and away the cheapest build that does sanctum the best in terms of hitless runs. And that's just why I made this character. That being said, in terms of a, just a tanky, all-round, feels-good character that could still crush Sanctum while doing the rest of the content, this Hex Blast character did it. That being said, for League Start, Hex Blast is a little bit weaker because its crit is so low, and I was really looking for something that would feel good on League Start, and I tested Pyroclast. This character blew me away in terms of power level, how strong it was early League. It crushed it. So, basically, my plan right now is I want to make a full guide on this Pyroclast League Starter with basically a suggestion, hey, if you want to farm Sanctum, check out this Trickster Hexblast mine character. It's an awesome way to do it. And that leads me to the current character I'm showcasing you right now in game, which is a character that I'm even specializing more for. I want to go fast. This doesn't have the same defensive feels good of Trickster Suppress plus Ghost Shroud plus Evasion, but this character has something that character doesn't, which is it goes 
fast. Basically, I'm tying together basically two of my favorite combinations, which is Calm Spirit, Wrath Pith, and Dissolution of the Flesh. So we stack a bunch of life, and the idea is with our high life pool, when you get percent regen and you tie that in with Calm Spirit, you get really good rage sustain. So I can just go ahead, proc Berserk, and I have really good uptime. Now, right now, I haven't proc'd any mines. I have 12% regen between the Saboteur Ascendancy Pyromaniac and the mind mastery a lot of my rage regen is when i'm actually doing content which you will be doing when you're throwing mines and stuff but the idea is we have really good berserk uptime which you should have seen in the map showcase at the start of this video we get to blaze through at lightning fast speed we have the auto targeting of hex blast mines and we still have very competitive damage to freeze lock all of the sanctum guys as well as moving very quickly through it the idea behind this character is to farm sanctum dissolution in my opinion it, it kind of gets a stat boost in Sanctum because Sanctum is a lot of more. There's less enemies, there's less going on, and it's more of just like singular guys you have to take on one by one by one. And I think Dissolution really kind of excels at that sort of combat compared to some of the other stuff. Now, granted, if you can't do the Lycia phase well enough and you just run into wave after wave of that damage, you can maybe die there. I think this character should be able to do it plenty fine, but. That's my idea behind it. I also still could fully recommend the uh, Trickster I did, but this character I think can do it quite well. And I think he can have comparable damage. Right now, on this character, I have the goal. Eventually, when we get to League, I'm assuming Sandstorm Visage is coming back. This character right now only has uh, about... It, this, it's a little bit better than this. The crit's better than this when we have power charges because we generate them and we have charge mind and stuff. Like it, The crit is better than this, but that being said... Uh, if I just took off the goal and I replaced it with Sandstorm Visage, I would instantly go to 100 crit chance, and I would be able to literally just put in Awakened Added Chaos or crit damage support, and I would have another damage link that this character doesn't even have in this showcase. Uh, so when it comes time for the League, if Sandstorm Visage is a common drop and it's affordable, it would be a massive boost to this character. This character works without it in case it doesn't exist, but... It would be insane with it that's what i'm saying anyways i also try to make this character for the most part reasonable my wand is a little bit unreasonable after that the amulet craft is basically just spamming crit essence until you hit strength roll and then do a reforge chaos in the prefix there's only one chaos mod on on amulet so i could see the plus one and then i crafted life so it's not particularly hard crafts like if you go through for the most part just crit crit essence with a straight with a strength fracture until you hit well int i have which int does nothing for me it gives percent es and it gives mana which i am blood magic and dissolution so i delete my so the int i'm like 100 over the int i need so that's complete dead stat um, I just stopped there because it hit life and I was like, yeah, whatever, sure enough. And then this one, I hit chaos res and I said, okay, let me just do a veiled chaos after a cycle can't be changed. Point is, the point I'm trying to make is you can look at this gear, maybe be impressed by it, maybe don't be. I think this gear is very easy to obtain, especially in a couple days in the league. I could very easily get this gear going. And my sales pitch to you is I have a plan for pyroclast. This build was insane for a league start scenario, and the idea would be you could farm a bunch. Oh, shoot. I'm not even showing you right now. Pyroclast. You could farm a bunch with this character right here, get your gearing, and then you could either go for a trickster setup, which is just super feels good. I love this build. One of my favorite builds I've ever made, to be honest with you. And, or you could even go to this character if you want to go for the just berserk, a little bit more speed, move fast, go fast, get stuff done. Oh, and you have a cool looking life pool that you can flex on other people with. That's the idea. Granted, I think maybe this this character here could maybe be a little bit more min-maxed as a Scion, but it's just such a smooth transition to be leveling as a Saboteur and then just do a slight respec. And okay, not a slight, it's a pretty big respec from the Pyro class build, but still, it's like it's like 80 regard orbs. It's the same ascendancy points, and you're up and running as this character right here, which is just whole thing is just move fast, bullet speed, farm some sanctums. Anyways, that being said, I'm still not decided i really want to start righteous fire i want to make a full guide on this because i think it's just awesome and i want other people to be able to have a great league starter if they like the mind play style because i've actually the mind mind play style is growing on me quite a bit as i played it more and more um i'm not fully decided i want to see more of the stuff about the guardian basically radiant skill maybe that's a minion that gives some sort of passive buff that makes it a pretty good skill that could be used on the rf characters to make the life start for righteous fire guardian a little bit better i'm crossing my fingers here i don't know um, but basically 
I got some plans, so I'm, I'm planning to make basically a Leaks Art video on the Pyro class with the suggestion to be able to alternate to this build or the Trickster Hex Blast uh, I have from Sanctum League, as well as potentially I might work on doing a RF Guardian, but I I'm still up in the air about that. I want to Leaks Art Righteous Fire really bad, but at the same time, I just found out about the this thing right here, the the ability to have some level of sustain if you have a good build that can just destroy sanctums even if you're getting hit with the worst boons possible it just sounds like a lot of fun to me so anyways that's my video about how to uh, dominate sanctum in the coming league start and what my thoughts are on a build that would be really good at good at it hopefully you enjoy the video as always thanks for watching exiles and uh take care and peace out